In this example, we're going to look at a chi-square goodness of fit test for the Poisson distribution with unknown parameters. Here we have an example about a geographer who's looking into how many telephone boxes are still present in a particular part of the UK. He divides a map of a rural area into squares with sides representing, representing five kilometres. So he's got 70 squares that are 25 kilometres square, five by five. We've got the data not presented in a frequency table, but presented just as raw data, so we need to think about that. And it asks us to test at the 5% significance level whether the Poisson distribution provides an adequate model for the data. So the first thing we need to think about then is how we compute a hypothesis test. We have seven steps that we always need to follow. We need to write our hypotheses. We need to think about if it is one or two tailed and the significance level. We need to work out a test statistic and for chi-squared goodness of fit tests we have to do the expected values first. Then we need a critical value. We compare those two and we conclude whether we accept or reject H0. So first of all we're going to look at our hypotheses. So as with all goodness of fit exam test examples we're saying that H0 is that the stated distribution, so in this case the Poisson distribution, does provide a good model. So just taking the context of this question, we're going to say that the Poisson distribution provides an adequate model for the number of public telephone boxes in the 75 by 5 kilometre squares. H1, as with all our other ones, is that it is not a suitable model. So we're just rewriting that out, saying that it is not provide an adequate model. Steps two and three don't normally get us any marks directly, but we need them later on, so it's good to point them out for us. Uh, when we are doing a chi-squared test, it is always one-tailed, and we're looking at that upper tail. And the significance level in this question is stated as 5%. But obviously, if it's not stated in the question, we always assume 5%. So, to work out our test statistic, we need our expected values. For this question, as I said right at the beginning, we've just been given raw data. And to make life easier for ourselves, we need to start off by just putting it in a frequency table. So, for our x values, those are our number of telephone boxes per square. And our frequency is how many we found. So, looking at the data, we found between 0 and 4 telephone boxes per 25 kilometre square. So I'm just going to count up on the data how many zeros, how many ones, twos, threes and fours. So we've got 27 zeros, 23 ones, 14 twos, four threes and two number fours. Now I've got that information on my frequency table, I can look at working out those expected values. To work out an expected value, I need to use the stated distribution, so the Poisson distribution, work out the probability of each x value and then work out how many we would expect using that probability. The difference between these examples and the ones we've done previously are I can't straight away work out a Poisson distribution. I can't work out using the Poisson distribution the probability of zero telephone boxes because I don't have a value for lambda. I don't have a parameter. So because that is unknown, I'm going to have to estimate it and I'm going to do that using x bar my sample mean so i'm going to put the value the information into my calculator and i'm going to get a value for x bar so if i take the sum of fx and divide by the sum of f 71 divided by 70 i get an x bar of 1.01429 and i'm going to use that as my estimate for lambda which gives me my poisson distribution as shown on the right there now i've got that value for lambda that i can use as my estimate I'm going to put that in my calculator using Poisson PD and I'm going to work out my probability for 0, my probability for 1, 2, 3 and then just be careful on the last one. In this example, out of the 70 squares that were um, looked at by the geographer, none of them had more than four telephone boxes in. However, there are a lot more than four that are possible in a five by five kilometer square so i must take that final value as four and over rather than just four itself 
So it's going to be a really, really small value anyway, a small difference, but I have to take that into account. So either using for that last one, 1 minus plus on CD, or just 1 minus the values that you've already calculated. Now I've got those p-values, those probabilities, I can work out how many I expect to see. So the geographer has looked at 70 squares. Out of those 70, how many do I expect to have zero telephone boxes? Well, I expect around about 36%. So 36% of 70 gives me 25.39. So I'm expecting 25.39 of the squares to have zero telephone boxes. I'm expecting just under 26 to have one telephone box. I'm expecting just over 13 to have two telephone boxes. Just over four to have three telephone boxes. And just over one to have four or more. There should be a little warning sign going off in your brain now. Because if I look at those E values, three and four plus are both less than five. And you should know by now that we can't use the chi-squared test statistic if my e value is less than five so i've got to combine those categories so instead of having three and four plus i'm going to make it a three plus category and i've just got the value here six by adding four and two i've got this probability 0 0.08 by adding these ones here and i can times that by 70 to get an e value of 5.8065 and that just means now that i've got all my e values greater than five now I've got my expected values, I can move on to work out the test statistic. So my test statistic uses the formula, the sum of O minus E or squared over E. So for each observed value, which is the frequency, and the expected value we've just calculated, we're going to subtract those, square it and divide by E. And that's going to give me four separate contributions to the test statistic. And then I simply add this column together here to get my final chi-squared test statistic of 0 0.47075. The next step is I find my critical value. So for my critical value, if I just flick back, I need to think about how many different options I'm considering. So I'm saying I have 0, I have 1, I have 2, and I have 3 plus. Those are my four different options. So I'm going to do 4 minus 1 to get my degrees of freedom. However, because I've had to estimate lambda using x bar, that means my data, my probabilities and my expected values are not perfectly accurate. They're an estimate. So my value isn't going to be as accurate as I would like so I need to take that into consideration and I need to make my critical value that little bit smaller therefore rather than just doing 4 minus 1 as I would normally do to get my degrees of freedom I'm going to subtract an extra one for extra security because I've estimated lambda so I'm going to do 4 minus 1 minus 1 and that gives me two degrees of freedom Looking on my table 6, my chi-squared distribution, I'm going along 2 degrees of freedom across the V rows. And upper one-tailed, 5% is 0 0.95. Where do they cross? They cross it here at 5.991. So that is my critical value. The last two points then are compare and conclude. So drawing my chi-squared distribution. Ta-da! I put on my critical value, which is 5.991. Anything to the left of that in the belly, I'm going to accept that test statistic. I'm going to accept that H1. And anything in the tail on the right-hand side is going to be reject. So my test statistic was 0 0.47075. So we can really, really easily see that that is going to be an accept conclusion. So hence we accept H0. Therefore, there is significant evidence to suggest that the Poisson distribution provides an adequate model for the number of public telephone boxes in the 75 by 5 kilometres square.